Alright, I'm just going to do the last recipe for the day and then I'm off. I'm sorry, I know I'm, <laughs> I haven't did this for sometimes, but maybe I hope that maybe next time we'll do some more on the Saturday. Only on Patreon, just in case I would finish it up. For, um, um, oh yeah, for The Walking Dead, of course, because I got some better idea, of course, but um, but yeah, so um, so this one is three, sorry, three true disturbing fall horror stories, and it is by Mr. Nightmares. Now, in case you never know this, um, this, in case you this October, uh, I know that I haven't get the chance to react to more than one of those scary, um, video stuff, but if y'all want me to do more of one of the scary videos, at least I on my own, <laughs> let me know, and I'll try to do more of them, uh, eventually if I can, so, yeah, <laughs> I'm scared, man, but, um, uh, re uploading this concept to YouTube or any other pro uh, platform such as TikTok is not allowed and will will be removed when found. When found, which is assault or termination. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> okay, so, um, I guess that's how it happened in TikTok, of course, so. Yeah, but, uh, let's check it out in 5, 4, 3, 2, Story one. My name is Nancy, and I work as a behavioral therapist in a local psychology office. I've been doing this for five years, and I've dealt with a lot of different types of people. I've had hundreds of clients now, and I used to think I've seen everything, but I didn't realize how wrong I was until I took in a young man named Peter as a client. Peter was 15 years old. Peter's father, Tom, would always come in with his son for our sessions. Tom believed his son was on the spectrum for autism, or any kind of social disorder, because all of his life he lacked friends and the ability to socialize with other people his age properly. What I would do at our therapy sessions is try to talk to Peter about things he enjoyed doing, things he wanted to do, and try to get him to open up about his personal life. But at first it was hard because he was very quiet and shy. I would ask Tom to leave the room occasionally to ask Peter some more personal questions about his family life and such. And it seems Peter opened up a bit more when his father wasn't in the room, but I always caught the vibe Tom preferred to stay in the room. I learned from Peter that his parents didn't get along at all. They would fight almost every night for as long as he could remember. He had no siblings or cousins coming from a very small family. So one thing about me, I love the fall season and anything pumpkin. Pumpkin beers, pumpkin pie, pumpkin spice latte, I can't get enough. One therapy session talking about the freshly fall weather outside, Peter was telling me about how this was his favorite season, and I told him the same, largely because of my love for pumpkin-flavored things. But later that night, when I was already in my robe getting ready for bed... Sorry to interrupt, but before I will continue on so far, fall is one of my favorite seasons of all time, uh, along with autumn's. Well, it's kind of the same thing, because um, I know how the October would have come sooner or later, is that, um, I always love to go to, like, Trick or Treat, or Halloween Festivals, or, I've never been to Halloween Festival, but maybe, hopefully for the first time I ever go there, I hope, but, um, um, maybe somewhere, or somewhere, cause, um, maybe <laughs> going to the damn hunting house, scared a little bejesus out of me, cause, um, that's how it is, man, but, um, but yeah, man, um, I, I had so much experience about it, because, um, whenever I wanted to go to Halloween, you know, whenever I wanted to celebrate Halloween every single time, because, um, it actually helps me a lot some time, and, you know, me and my family are planning on doing so until, um, oh, till the end of the weekend, well, t yeah, till the end of the October, of course, but, it's gonna get some more times to do it so, but um, you know, collect some costume, of course. But um, that helps me a lot sometimes. But um, 
but yeah, 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 you you see all of these, and um, I'm probably gonna collect the, uh, I'm probably gonna go along with my mom, just for a just for a big adventure. I hope, cause um, it actually helped me a lot sometimes. So you know, but yeah. Fall weather outside. Peter was telling me about how this was his favorite season, and I told him the same, largely because of my love for pumpkin flavored things. But later that night. When I was already in my robe getting ready for bed, there was a loud knocking at my front door. I never get knocks past 9 o'clock, so I was nervous when I went to check the window to see who was there. There wasn't anyone, but when I opened the door, I saw a mini pumpkin and a pumpkin flavored coffee creamer on the ground in front of my door. I knew this was no coincidence. Only a few hours ago, I told Peter about my obsession with pumpkin flavored things. Oh, when my here, attempted please. call to Thomas the next day didn't go through, I texted him a picture of the two items left by my door and how inappropriate and uncomfortable it is for me to be followed home by a client. Tom texted back within 10 minutes saying that his son would never do something like that. He almost acted offended by my accusation. Momentarily, it got me wondering, what if it was just a gift from a neighbor or something? The week went by and I wondered if I should terminate my relationship with Peter as a client, but I decided not to to see how the next session would go. The following Monday, Peter and Tom came in like usual. Peter seemed to be acting as normal. By now, he seemed very happy to talk to me, but I thought I saw it for what it was now, that he may have thought he was attracted to me, being possibly the only woman to speak to him with respect in his life. What? During that session, I brought up the little gifts at my front door with a smile, not directly accusing him of leaving them, just hinting at what a coincidence it was and I noticed Tom getting annoyed in the corner by my bringing it up. Peter acted shocked and agreed it was a huge coincidence. It was a truly bizarre situation and I didn't know what to do. But if it happened again, I knew I'd have to terminate our relationship. Two nights later, a knock at my door again while I was in the living room watching a movie. My heart sank because I already knew what I was expecting. I checked the window again and no one was there. So I slowly opened the door and sighed out of disgust when I saw more pumpkin flavored things on my stoop. This time a pumpkin pie, pumpkin Cheerios, and pumpkin Oreos. It was a little past 9 o'clock at this point. I got my cell phone and took a picture of the items once again and sent it to Tom. I was about to start typing out a text about why I could no longer see them, but I heard the ding of someone's phone receiving a text right to my left in the bushes in front of my house. I started walking slowly over to it, saying Peter's name. I saw someone hiding in the bush as I got close enough, but it wasn't Peter. It was Tom. We looked each other in the eyes, and he said, Hi Nancy, you look beautiful as always. And I screamed. I ran into my house and locked the door, seconds before he tried opening it and started banging on it. I screamed to leave me alone or I'd call the police. He apologized through the door and yelled he's leaving. I watched through the window as he left to his car and drove away. This explained not only the unwanted gifts at my door, but possibly the sound of my side gate closing in the middle of the night weeks prior to this. I have no idea how long he was stalking me at my house. My brother, who's a police officer, advised me not to even bother trying to get a restraining order because there wasn't any evidence that he meant me any harm, and it would just be he said, she said allegations. However, I did report the case to the police and added that Peter may be in an unsafe, abusive household. I don't know what Tom's end goal was by following me home and leaving those things by my door. Based on the way he tried to open my door after I locked it, though, says he wasn't trying to be a romantic type. I feel sorry for Peter. His dad brought him in to see me only as some kind of method of getting closer to me. I mean, that's only the reason how this happens, man. Knowing that we, knowing that what you have to see for your doctor to know that, you know, start being nice to you and all that, and... I mean, that would it be like a stalker, I believe, because, you know, all that and stuff, but, um, I mean, still, that would be a stalker if that ever happened, so, yeah. I feel sorry for Peter. His dad brought him in to see me only as some kind of method of getting closer to me. It was a Friday night in early October a long time ago. I was with my three friends, Jose, Brian, and Tanya. 
We were being bored teenagers wanting something to do in the spirit of the season. It was a nice fall night out, low 60s, nice breeze, so we wanted to be outside. Not much goes on in our boring town, and we weren't old enough to go to bars or anything. We decided to ride our bikes up Miller's Road to this old closed down pumpkin farm nicknamed Farmer John's Pumpkin Patch. It used to be a literal farm surrounded by crops on one side and forest on the other. The alleged Farmer John, or whoever actually owned it, didn't live there anymore. It was sold, and whoever bought the land just never did anything with it for a long time. It was a 20 minute bike ride up Miller's Road, which is an extremely quiet road traffic wise. Just lots of cornfields and farms around this area. When we got there, we rode our bikes off the road onto the grass, all with our flashlights on. We leaned our bikes up against the old abandoned house that the owner used to live in. Next time, do it at morning, not at night. Just do it at the morning, because I'm very scared if that ever happens, so <clears throat> I'm just giving y'all advice. You know, during October, of course, so yeah of cornfields and farms around this area. When we got there, we rode our bikes off the road onto the grass, all with our flashlights on. We leaned our bikes up against the old abandoned house that the owner used to live in. We walked around the overgrown grass a bit, checking out where the pumpkin patch used to be and where the animals in the little petting zoo area used to be. There's something really cool about exploring abandoned places at night, but also kind of spooky. We went back to the house where we left the bikes. Breaking into it was relatively easy since we weren't the first ones to do so. The door was already knocked off the hinges. All we had to do was kick it open. This is where it got really creepy though, being in an abandoned house at night. Even as a thrill seeker, it's a bit unnerving, even when you're four people. I'd say five minutes into being inside the house, we started to hear thumps from upstairs. Like periodic thumps, not just random thumps. Jose and I decided to head upstairs to check it out. Tanya didn't want to go upstairs because she was scared, so Brian stayed downstairs with her. When we got to the upstairs, the thumping was much louder wow. for sure. Ah! From the left side of the stairs. Our is flashlights that, revealed a bunch me? of doors up here, all open, leading into what were probably once all bedrooms. Okay, oh my god. <laughs> oh. Oh, I thought somebody else. It's in here. Oh my god, I'm so scared. Maybe because I'm wearing my goddamn headphones, man. Oh my god. Yo, oh, that's so scary. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm a, I'm a coward, okay? I'm a coward, like I say once again, because every time that something bad is going to happen, when some place is haunted, of course. But, yeah, man. It was because she was I'm scared, sorry. so I'm Brian sorry, stayed downstairs with her. When we got to the upstairs, the thumping was much louder for sure. It came from the left side of the stairs. Our flashlights revealed <laughs> a bunch of doors up here, all open, leading into what were probably once all bedrooms. Our footsteps were loud as we walked closer to the room with the thumping. There was no way to hide it on these rickety, creaky floorboards. When we got to the corner room doorway. The thumping stopped. I whispered to Jose, is it an animal? He went, shh. I pointed my flashlight into the room, starting from the left side, working the light to the right. I stopped when my flashlight landed on a male's figure in the corner of the room facing the wall, with what appeared to be blood on the wall in front of him, Yikes. probably banging his head on it, creating those thumping sounds. Jose aimed his light at him too, and we both jumped back. We left in a hurry. And as we ran down the stairs, a horrifying, gut-wrenching scream came from the room we were just in, causing all four of us to scream. As we left the house and got to our bikes, we heard stomping down the stairs from inside the house as the screaming got louder. We all ran to our bikes, absolutely freaked the fuck out, and we pedaled as fast as we could out of there. The screaming stopped before it ever came out of the house. We didn't look back. We continued pedaling all the way up Miller's Road till we got back to my house. I have no idea what we witnessed in there, and I won't even try to explain it. Next time, don't try to investigate at a any abandoned buildings, house, hospitals, mental asylums, or anywhere else. Like, don't try to like investigate. I don't know. We're gonna be fucking in your beds, man. 
Like, <coughs> like this is what I'm talking about, bro. This is where the fuck I'm talking about. Like, you notice how every people that want to investigate some every single one of something bad of it and <laughs> some white people shit. No offense, no offense. I'm just saying, but um, I'm just saying because every time I watch scary movies. People always go investigate whether they're white people or any any people that want to investigate. I know that a lot of black people don't want don't want to investigate. Cause like, you're like, no man, I don't want to investigate. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> and I, I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all because that's not how we do in real life, of course. <laughs> I mean, I could bring more than a people. I could bring five or six or seven because um maybe that can help me a lot sometimes when I want to investigate. So yeah, that's how it is, man. Screaming got louder. We all ran to our bikes, absolutely freaked the fuck out. We pedaled as fast as we could out of there. The screaming stopped before it ever came out of the house. We didn't look back. We continued pedaling all the way up Miller's Road till we got back to my house. I have no idea what we witnessed in there, and I won't even try to explain it. I won't try to explain it either. When I was a little kid, there was this top of the mountains resort I went to with my family two different times. The resort was shut down a long time ago, but I remember it for the most part to be a very nice, family-friendly place. Both times we went, it was in the fall, because my mom wanted to go for the changing colors of the leaves. This story takes place the second time we went to the resort. I was, I think, six years old. My older brother, Corey, was around ten, and my little brother was around four. My parents paid most attention to my little brother, of course, with the expectation that my older brother would be kind of watching out for me. On this particular night, they were doing the bonfire marshmallow roast and hayride. We had ridden the hayride already while the sun was going down. After that was the bonfire and mini fireworks show. At the bonfire, I met this man who started talking to me, asking me <coughs> if I was having fun and if I'd been to the resort before. He said he was one of the owners. Then he gave me a little laser pointer toy, and I instantly Ooh. trusted him because, you know, I was six. The hayride driver announced wow. that he was doing a final ride in the dark and that he was going to drive down the big hill, which sounded exciting. My older brother suggested we do it. He made some friends at the resort, so I think he disappeared to go look for them to ride the hayride with us. In the meantime, I was still sitting by the bonfire. My dad was drinking beer with his other dad on the other side of the fire, and my mom was with my little brother roasting marshmallows. Eventually, I went to go ask my mom where Corey went, and she said he's going on the hayride and to hurry and get on before they left. So I hurried to the mini line of like five people waiting to get on, and when I was on, there were about 15 to 20 people on there, but I didn't see my brother. I sat on one of the haystacks anyway, waiting, as the truck started up, indicating it was about to leave. I saw that man from before climb into the truck with a woman behind him, and he came to sit next to me when he saw me. He asked where my family was, and I shrugged my shoulders. Speaking of that, my brother never got on the hayride. The woman sat next to him. She looked at me and smiled, and he said that's his wife. He asked if I still had that laser pointer, and I said yeah and showed it to him. He smiled. The whole time I spoke with the man, his wife next to him was looking at me, smiling. During the hayride, the two were basically talking to me the whole time. Then when we were approaching the hill drop where the driver said he was going to floor it, the man next to me saw I was nervous. So when we drove down the hill, he grabbed my arms and lifted them in the air so as to do the no hands thing that people like to do on roller coasters. It actually made me laugh because the drop down was fun. The man asked me if I had been to the arcade of the resort yet, and when I shook my head no, he told me he had the key to a lot of the games, and asked if I wanted it. I of course shook my head yes. He said he'd just have to go get it and go there with me, and it would be all mine. We one by one left the back of the truck as we got back to the bonfire. The man and woman both walked alongside me, and the woman held my hand and kept calling me sweetie anytime she said something to me. The man said the arcade wasn't far. 
as we walked away from the brightness of the huge bonfire and into the darkness of the pathway back towards the cabins and main buildings of the resort, I heard Cody's voice call my name from behind. I turned, and it was Cody looking at us. I yelled back we're going to the arcade, and the man and woman looked back but didn't say anything. My brother didn't follow us or say anything else. After we got further from the bonfire, the woman's grip on my hand got tighter and we started walking faster. Something wasn't right because her grip was starting to hurt me. I also noticed we weren't going in the direction of the clubhouse. We were heading towards the parking lot. When I asked where we were going, the man said we're getting the key to the arcade games. Next thing I remember, my mom's panicked screaming voice was heard behind us, screaming let go of him. My mom was running over hysterical and the two strangers stepped away from me and I remember the woman saying some BS like they were taking me to the front desk area. My mom yelled and cursed at them, and the two of them just quickly walked away into the darkness. I wish my dad was with my mom at that moment to kick the man's ass. The worst part is they got to just drive off and potentially do this to somebody else. My mom asked everybody at the bonfire if they had seen those people. Nobody recognized them. She also reported this to the resort and the police. But really, what could they do once the couple disappeared? The idea that I was almost kidnapped by a creepy older couple when I was only six or seven is stomach churning, even to this day. Jesus Christ, man. That's why I told, that's why I noticed that you can't trust any people that, um, you know, that go some, do something very bad. And knowing for the fact of how this happened before then, like most of the other people that got kidnapped by some strangers or, you know, or a lot of, or almost the children that got kidnapped by, um, uh, old man or woman. And that's only the problem. Y'all gotta be careful out there because, um, we, we don't want anything bad happens to them. Especially when it happens to my niece. Because I'm very worried about it because um, I don't want anything to happen to my niece because um, cause I'll do everything in my strength to like, keep them safe along, along with y'all. Y'all got to keep y'all family and your friends safe as long as nothing bad is ever going to happen like in real life. Well, if it is going to happen in real life, then shit, man, I don't know what the hell, man, because... Uh, if that ever happens to me when, you know, some creepy couple guy, well, creepy couples that started to kidnap me for no reason, like, I would never trust them at all. <laughs> like, I know I've been having some trust issues, man. Like, god damn. That, that's, that's the one messed up situation, man, but, yeah, that was a great, that was a great story from, um, Mr. Nightmares, cause, um, cause I was thinking that I should do more of, <clears throat> more of these next time, cause, um, if y'all want me to do more on uh, one of the stories from Mr. Nightmares or the others, let me know, cause, um, I'm actually gonna do so, I'm actually do some if I could, cause, um, it is October. It is October. And like I said, I will be trying my best to react to more one of those scary, um, scary things. Because, um, I'm scared. And I am a coward. So I just don't know, man. But, um, but yeah. So, um, that, that is it. That is it for right about now. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe if you're new here. Click the bell notification down below in case you are new. And I'll see y'all next time. Mr. Dollar sign out. Bye.